everybody that Donald Trump stopped travel coming from China to the United States to prevent the infection from spreading too quickly at the same time that Joe Biden called it xenophobic and fear mongering. He's done an incredible job and sadly it has not been reported as such. Laura, we're out of time right now. Of course, it was a March 18th tweet when Joe Biden did accuse the president of being xenophobic and fear mongering when he was using the phrase Chinese virus in his tweet that day. Right? Wrong. I swear, you would think that as much as I'm immersed in this garbage every day, that nothing would surprise me. But it still boggles my mind. These alleged reporters appear like stoic, truth-seeking, hard-hitting defenders of democracy on a super serious news program. But they're fakes. Asking Laura Trump tough questions about the president should be expected, right? Sure, but this is a one-way street where only Trump and Republicans are getting these hostile interviews. And it's not just that they're hostile towards Laura, but they bristle over attacks against Biden and leap to his defense. I mean, they're straight up campaigning for his election. Okay, let's dig into this shit sandwich. But first, give me just 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer from this episode's sponsor, Orion Metal Exchange. How far will your US dollar go once we tally up all the debt accumulated in the fight against coronavirus. How will government-mandated business shutdowns affect the economy moving forward? Did you know that it took nearly eight years for the markets to recover after the 2008 housing bubble crash? Do you really have eight years to wait for a recovery? Some experts are calling for gold to double in the next year. Orion Metal Exchange is Consumer Affairs' top-rated gold IRA dealer. Call today and request a free investment kit below. Mention Drone Tech Politics and get a free one-ounce silver coin for qualified retirement account holders must be over 40 to qualify call 866-915-5053 and get your free investment guide today at orion you get more precious metals for your money every day we appreciate your time this morning we want to ask you about the democratic national convention this last week your father-in-law the president's repeatedly attacked joe biden as sleepy joe and slow joe but his acceptance speech on thursday was widely praised even fox news described it as enormously effective. So doesn't that blow a hole in the president's argument? Oh my God, are you serious? You see, the media ignores the vast majority of Biden's insane ramblings, and then they act like all criticism of him is now invalid because he mostly read a teleprompter competently. But he did, again, repeat this debunked lie that Trump called neo-Nazis fine people. It never happened, and yet, where's the fact check? What the hell? The BBC fact checks Joe Biden, but not American media? It's like Van Jones said on CNN the other night. We, people would, would have accepted anything. We just wanted Joe to get out there so, you know, sometimes when he gets out there, you're afraid he's going to make a mistake. He's going to have a gaffe. You, the the set expectations are just so low. And we were prepared for it to be a terrible speech. As long as he didn't embarrass himself, we were going to come out here and praise it. You don't have to make nothing up tonight. Perhaps admitting what we all already know, that the media's job is to lie for Joe Biden. And I love the constant whining that Trump is attacking Joe Biden. Yeah, it's a presidential election. The presidential candidates typically attack each other. The fact that he got through a speech that was on a teleprompter, I mean, I, we kind of expected that. It was all laid out for him there. But look, I think what you're going to see is a very different depiction of America. What we saw last week from the Democrats, really their, their entire convention was was about bashing Donald Trump. And it was a dark, dismal, and really depressing vision of America, I think, that they presented. You're going to be surprised by some of the things we do. The president will be part of our convention yeah. every single night. Uh, so we're excited to showcase that for people. And Laura, let me drill down with you a little bit on messaging specifically, because as you say, as the president has said, you're accusing the Democrats of having a dark and gloomy message. And yet President Trump said yesterday, quote, I'm the only thing standing between the American dream and total anarchy, madness and chaos. Is that the message we can expect to hear from the president this week? And how is that positive, Laura? Notice how they instantly go on the defense for Democrats. The reason Trump says that is because it's the media and the Democrats that are running cover for these violent far left riots and protests that are going on across the country in several major cities for the last four months now. This is a tactic that the media uses. They very rarely report on any of the violence from BLM or Antifa. So the only place you can find any news about it is on the right or on Twitter. So when things like this happen and people start seeing it on Twitter, they 
they instantly just dismiss it as some sort of fringe right-wing conspiracy theory. Yet, if you do get on Twitter and follow people like Andy No, you're going to see lots of video of BLM and Antifa people doing exceedingly violent acts. Look at this video from last night where they're pointing guns at a sheriff's vehicle, attempting to, I guess, intimidate them or get them out of the car. But can you even imagine for a second the media outburst if something like that happened at a right-leaning protest? I searched for any news on this story in the mainstream media and I couldn't find a single mention of it. So then she poses this question that Trump actually talking about this very real problem that's occurring across this country, she asks if that's a dark vision. Yeah, just talking about what's happening in reality is a dark vision, simply because they and the media just don't talk about it. I think that's the truth. Look, the reality is the Democrats didn't want to address the fact that in the Democrat run amazing cities that we have in America, these cities are being completely taken over by chaos. And sadly, the mayors of these cities are letting their citizens down. They are not protecting small businesses. They are not keeping people safe. They're letting anarchy overrun things. Let's ask you about the coronavirus if we can. Joe Biden laid out a specific plan to fight the virus, rapid testing, resources to open schools safety, uh, safely, follow the science. What is wrong with that prescription? And what exactly is the president's plan? Jeez, this election Legend reporter is again sounding a lot like a salesman like a member of the Biden campaign maybe if he were being even the least bit objective here he would have pointed out that Trump has been doing all of these things he might have also pointed out that Biden attacked Trump's early measures to stem the spread but no, he ignores both of those facts in favor of a cheap sales pitch for a guy who sniffs and inappropriately touches little kids. Another annoying trope here, and I'm seeing it quite a bit, is the left's claim to science as if it's political and they own it. I'm a right winger and I love science. I always have. But I am skeptical and I do question the conventional wisdom. I have no doubt and you have no doubt that if anybody asked this guy if men can have babies, that his response would be yes. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's actually exactly what this president did. And thank goodness we didn't listen to Joe Biden. Is the back president in following January the science? He's been critical of his own scientists. Absolutely. Absolutely he has. He has from the beginning. And I want to remind everybody that Donald Trump stopped travel coming from China to the United States to prevent the infection from spreading too quickly at the same time that Joe Biden called it xenophobic and fear mongering. That We're out of time right now. Of course, it was a March 18th tweet when Joe Biden did accuse the president of being xenophobic and fear mongering when he was using the phrase Chinese virus in his tweet that day. Right? Wrong. How pathetic and yet very typical of Mr. Peter Alexander here to throw out this bullshit defense of Biden as you end the interview. For one, the virus did in fact come from China and saying so isn't racist or xenophobic. It was actually the CCP that originally floated the it's racist narrative in defense of the fact that it did come from China. However, what they don't mention is that Biden didn't in fact attack Trump's travel ban as xenophobic on the very day that Trump instituted the travel ban. Of course, it was a March 18th tweet when Joe Biden did accuse the president of being xenophobic and fear mongering when he was using the phrase Chinese virus in his tweet that day. You know, we have right now a crisis with the uh, coronavirus emanating from China, a national emergency, uh, you know, worldwide alerts. The American people need to have a president who they can trust what he says about it, that he is going to act rationally about it. In moments like this, this is where the credibility of a president is most needed, as he explains what we should and should not do. This is no time for Donald Trump's record of hysteria, xenophobia, hysterical xenophobia, to... Uh, and fear-mongering to lead the way instead of science. Surprise, surprise, the hard-hitting professionals at NBC were misleading their audience on the way out of a fake interview that was actually an infomercial for the Biden campaign. If you have any doubts, check out this interview they did with a member of Biden's family. You've given yes. many, yeah, yeah. Good morning. I, yeah, good morning, we're, but we're in the same boat here. You've given many convention speeches after all these years, but never like this, never in an empty classroom. Do you feel you got your message across? Do you worry about the election, the fairness of the election, voting? 
let's talk about schools. As we well know, you are an educator. You are a community college professor yep. yourself. We've seen what's happened. Uh, Notre Dame just announcing to, they have to suspend in-person classes mm -hmm. after a week. We saw it um, at other schools so far. Do you think it was a mistake to have college campuses open, just given what we know about college kids, frankly? Of course, Kamala Harris's big moment. Um, you were definitely a part of that process, that selection process. Um, tell us about why she was chosen. Why did your husband choose her as his running mate? This is tough. You're not a stranger to it. You've been in it, I think. Your husband's been in the Senate since the 70s. Forever. So, yes, forever. So you know yeah. it well, and you know how hard it can be. You gotta have a thick skin. The president's campaign this week released an ad just uh, really attacking your husband's cognitive ability, suggesting that he's lost a step or two in the last few years. As far as you're concerned, is that a fair attack? Is that something that should be debated as part of the campaign? Who is counting, right? Dr. Biden, thank you so much. I know you're scared. Yeah, <laughs> up late, up early. <laughs> Uh, we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Before we all go, I wanted to let you all know that I will be streaming the RNC convention starting tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, and that'll be on YouTube, Facebook, DLive, and Twitch. Pick a platform and join us. I'll be having guests, and I'll be inviting audience members onto the stream with us. That's all I have for today. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. It's really important to the channel. If you want to support us, the best way you can do that is by supporting the companies that support us. If you want to donate to the channel, you can do so on any of the platforms that are listed in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.